just because they can read print text easily, independent, does not mean they can do it on a screen. We have to acknowledge what's different and we need to teach those differences, okay? And so for me, they kind of come in a couple different categories. I think we've got to teach things like how to navigate. And, and I've given you just a whole slew down here to, to kind of take a peek at. How to navigate when you're reading on a screen. Like, what do you mean? Well, yeah, like what's a hyperlink? Yeah, that's good. How to use the mouse over so that it pops up, maybe a definition or something. But how about the idea of scrolling within a document, up and down, left and right? Hey, what about two scroll bars? And how just because you're moving one, the other one not moving. And how do you get it to move? The idea of maximizing and minimizing windows. How about two windows side by side? We know how to open up tabs on a website, but do they know how to rearrange them so that they can put the most important and the second most important? Do they know how to do that? Why? Why would they want to do that? Who's teaching this? We can't just let kids figure it out. See, I think that's what some of us are falling into. Oh, they already know this. I think you'd be shocked at how much they don't know. They do a lot of clicking, but I don't know why they're doing what they're doing. And things just happen. Shoot, that's us. Like, how'd that happen? Where did that go? I was looking for this idea of intentional instruction. If you start your reading year with a launch and you introduce them on how to do things, how to pick out a book, how to set up the reader's notebook, how to navigate this, how to move through this, how to transit. I'm asking, hey, are any of these part of your beginning of the year launch? Would any of these set them up to be better on-screen readers all year long? It's just because I can use a highlighter in my hand doesn't mean I know how to use the highlighter on screen. I think we've got to start the year with the tutorial. I think some of us just, bam, fire up the game. And we're not walking these kids through the tutorial. No wonder there's a line at our desk and hands in the air and they're chasing us around the room. They're lost. And again, I say, man, don't assume. Don't assume they know this stuff. Even something as simple as that first one, cursor symbols. Well, let's test you. Let's test you. What do each of those cursor symbols mean? Here's the answer key. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is on the secret site. This is on the secret site, but uh, I'm thinking we're assuming some things. Shoot, we didn't even know some of those. And some of them are for certain programs or certain apps in certain areas. But all of that is the cursor. That's all the mouse. We're not even talking about another something. It's the same mouse symbol that's changing. And when you see this, it means you're going to type something. When you see this, you're going to click. You're going to drag. You're going to enlarge. You're going to rotate. What does it mean? It means stop clicking. It's thinking. That's what it means. Right? I'll just click more. No. 